What's going on guys, RIPA here using that max power turn on YouTube and today we are going to be going through the final week of the regular season of GPC Season 2, the Grand Pokemon Conference and this week we were taking on Swalot Fred FC, coached by Shane Groves aka David, uh, links will be in the description below. Uh, this is going to be a quick video by the way, I don't have a ton of time plus this needs to go up really soon. So. We're gonna make this short and sweet. Now, looking at his team, looking at my team, he definitely has the matchup advantage, but I do have Megalopony, which pretty much stomps on every Pokemon he has. Uh, I just need to make sure that she stays healthy. Now, he has Mega Charizard X, Skarmory Celebi, Tornadus T Milotic, Aromatisse, Neo King, Jolteon, Zangoose, Rotom Fan, and Levani. And I have Megalopony, Slowbro, Dragal G, Seismitoad, Crobat, Azumarill, Dublade, Meloetta, Typhlosion, Durant, and Sigilyph. Now, looking at his team straight away, I have absolutely nothing that switches in on a Jolteon, other than maybe an Assault Vest Meloetta, but Meloetta in general wasn't going to do a ton of damage to his team, especially a team that has Nidoking, Zangoose, uh, whatchamacallit, especially since I can't run max speed with Meloetta if I'm going to be doing, um, an AV set, Charizard X, uh, Zangoose, uh, Nido King, and uh, I think that was about it. Uh, visit uh, U turns from Celebi doing damage to something that can't heal itself is just very it's very inconvenient. So I really didn't have a reason to bring Meloetta. Uh, Dragalge is a pretty safe switch in, uh, especially because I'm 100% sure he's going to be running HP Grass because of my Seismitoad and. Uh, it would have been really safe to bring. The only problem is the fact that I can't touch Skarmory and I don't need rocks on my side of the field. Prohibiting my Crobat and, uh, well, yeah, and lowering my Durant and things like that. It's just, I don't know. I don't know. I really just didn't feel like bringing, like, Dragology would do a ton, especially since Celebi is going to be very prominent in this battle. Uh,. Zard X is faster and KOs me, so I'm forced to switch into Slowbro and I don't want to have that happen. If he starts setting up Dragon Dances, I can just lose like that, and Dragalgy is just another thing for him to, to um, set up on. If, uh, oh well, not to set up on, but to scare out and then set up on, I guess. Or get a, a free Dragon Dance, you, you get what I mean. Uh, my low tick and Aroma Teeth are always annoying. Tornadus T, if Assault Vest is going to be incredibly not difficult to deal with but this is gonna be annoying especially with the generator and the fact it just switches whenever it feels like it I I know Levani and Rotom Fan aren't going to be factors in this battle or even bought is what I'm saying and uh, yeah so now that I've gone through our teams and what I'm thinking I'm gonna go ahead and go show you my team we're gonna I already have team builder open so might as well just go ahead and do that so let me see push uh, push for the playoffs now I'm gonna make this one thing before I, uh, where is it? Yeah, so, this may very well be, very. this is actually very important to the battle. The fact that I don't have quick attack is going to be very, you'll see, you'll see later on why it's so important that, that I just showed you that I don't have quick attack. So, Bun Bun the Megalopony, of course, Lopanite Limber, Fake Out Return, High Jump Kick, and Ice Punch. Ice Punch was really, I looked it through his team, I was looking at, uh, it hits everything if he decides to, uh, oh, except for Milotic, of course, uh, it hits everything either super effectively or neutrally. Most of, most things have to be hit super effectively, or, well, not even most things, but, uh, you know what, I'm just gonna stop talking there with that. But yeah, so Fake Out Return, High Jump Kick, Ice Punch, should have put Quick Attack here, or Drain Punch, or maybe even Agility would have been f much better than Ice Punch. So, I was actually thinking about Agility too, but then I was like, I just, I don't know if I'll ever get the opportunity to use it, and I felt like I would have wasted a move slot. And uh, little did I know, I did waste a move slot anyway. <laughs> So next up we have Slow Sis, the Slow Bro with the Rocky Helmet, Regenerator, Skull Fire Blast, Slack Off, and Signal Beam. Uh, Max Physically Defensive, this was a must have because of his Charizard X. I needed a switch in for it, that was very reliable. Toadsworth could also do it, but the fact is, oh well, yeah, Toadsworth is pretty reliable. The fact of the matter is that he still does have, um, you know what, yeah, let's just stop there. Toadsworth would have been pretty reliable, but I was running a different set. So, Skull Fire Blast, Slack Off, and Signal Beam. Signal Beam specifically for Celebi, if it wants to switch in on me. Um, what was Fire Blast for? 
Fire Blast was, oh, for Skarmory in particular. And Scald was just for Stab and for some Burns. Next up we have Tribal Goddess, the Sigil with the Life Orb Magic Guard. I was going to run a different set, but I felt like this was the safest one. Heat Wave, Air Slash, and Psy Shuck. Giving me coverage, Heat Wave for the Skarmory, and Celebi can't switch in on it. Uh, Air Slash for Celebi as well. Um, well, Air Slash was specifically for Celebi and for the stab I get on his other mons as well. Um, the mons that Heat Wave doesn't hit specifically, my low tick as well. Take it. Although I could have also run Energy Ball. I could have run 4 attack to be honest, considering... Um, I don't know if I would get the opportunity to roost, but I digress. Could have run energy ball, but I didn't. Whatever. All right. So next up, we have low five, the crowbat. Oh, what did I just step in? Oh my gosh. Oh, my dog is sweating. Ew. Anyways, uh, <laughs> low five, the crowbat, black sludge, inner focus, super fang, brave bird, defog, and roost. I originally had super fang, uh, U-turn, and I believe cross poison specifically for Aromatisse. But then I looked at the team again, and I felt that Aromatisse was not the best option for him. Uh, even though I do have Lopini, I'm pretty sure if I can get rocks up onto the field and Lopini can pressure with return, I can 2 it KO it. Or either 2 it KO it or force him to have to use, uh, whatchamacallit? Damn it! Ah, forget it. Uh, wish, there you go, that's what it was. Uh, but yeah, I just felt like this was better to set Super Fang specifically for Skarmory and for Milotic to bring them down to half and give me a more of a fighting chance than I already sort of had. Next up, we had Rindo Berry Toadsworth, the Seismitoad. Now, this was specifically for that Jolteon who had Hidden Power Grass, and that is why I should have led with him. Uh, you'll see in a bit. Should have led with him. This would have been like the greatest thing of all time, but it's fine. So, Toadsworth, Rindo Berry, Water Absorb, Stealth Rock, Sludge Bomb, Earth Power, and Skull. Max Special Attack, just to make sure that I have a chance at. I think Max Special Attack, um, Modest only has a chance at KOing with Earth Power, I'm not sure. Wait, no, I think I'm talking about Zardex. Pretty sure Jolteon just dies. But uh, yeah, 196 HP. I didn't need an odd number HP considering he is uh, resistant to rocks. And I put 16 in Special Defense because uh, just in case, just so I can get a little bit less done to me by that Hidden Power Grass, just so I have a little more use for myself. And last but not least, we have Kevin Durant, the Salak Berry Durant with uh, Hustles, X Scizor, Rock Slide, Iron Head, and Home Claws. Yeah, I chose the wrong week to try to be um, cool, but this set would have been fantastic if I had gotten a Home Claws off. I think there's only one mod I could set up on, and that would have been um, a, nut, a Skarmory without Whirlwind or Celebi without Hidden Power Fire. I could have set up on, and Aromatisse. So, I uh, could have actually set up on Zangoose too, to be honest. So, I had a few options if he decided to bring them, anyways. Uh, and. Selackberry, so when I get down to when I get down really low, boost my speed to 660. Oh wait, not 660. It's one by one stage. It's you. Woof, I'm so bad. Uh, let me see. One, uh, 505, I believe. Yeah, something like that. Uh, wow. Oh, I'm pretty sure I screwed that up. Yeah. Oh, 495. Excuse me. Anyways, moving on from that, I think that's about it. I really, I'm sad that I didn't bring Meloetta, but at the same time, I do feel like this this is a better team without her, a better a team that's more suited to dealing with David's team, possibly. I just knew, I was looking at the team, I, I looked through it like six times, I was like, alright, how am I going to deal with Jolteon? I was like, you know what, we're going to put offensive pressure on her, and uh, on it, excuse me, <laughs> on, uh, well, I guess, uh, I've always seen Jolteon as a girl, but yeah, so, I just thought, felt like putting as much pressure on it as offensively as possible would have been great. Once again, probably should have let Toes worth. That would have been fantastic, and I might have actually changed the entire outcome of the match. But uh, you'll see that later. Did I win or did I lose? I will never tell. Or well, at least uh, in the next seven minutes. Forget it. I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> I'm sorry about this. I'm kind of uh, all over the place right now. Here, oh god, damn, it's, it, it froze, so I was like, okay, is it recording or not? But yeah, here we are, the final week of the GPC regular season. Wonder if this match goes to the playoffs, should Omega not get a higher differential to, than either of us. And uh, if I win, it's pretty much a lock. David still has to sweat if he does. So, looking at his team, Celebi and Jolteon are givens, Skarmory as well, and Zardex. But uh, he decided to bring Needle King and Milotic for those fill-in slots. And uh, that's, well, we might as well just get into it. So he's going to lead off with Jolteon. This is why I said I should have led off with my Seismitoad. Now, 
I only have one option because I don't have any switch-ins. I could have also switched into Durant just to be that guy. <laughs> and then, um, uh, what you would call it? I don't even know anymore, to be honest. I was going to put Endure on that Durant just so I could get the Slackberry boost. Like, if I could home claws on a switch and then Endure on something, that would have been fantastic. But then I would have lost coverage with one of my moves, and I needed all of them. Although, I didn't actually need Iron Head, to be honest, in this match. Uh, but I'm pretty sure then I wouldn't have been able to hit uh, Needle King. Oh well. Nonetheless, let's continue with this. So if I led Seismitoad here, so look, I'm gonna go ahead and switch to Seismitoad here just in case. I, I thought he would probably just go for like a coverage move, but he goes straight for the Hidden Power Grass on the switch. I could have stayed in, just gone for like a Super Fang there, which would have gotten some good damage off on him. And then he can't switch into Crobat anymore because we are in a speed tie. Or actually, no, I, I, I turn out to be faster. And I would have 2 killed him with Brave Bird later on. But yeah, so this would have been great because now I ate my Rindo Berry and I can just go ahead and Earth Power. I would have been able to just go ahead and Earth Power. So he switches out here knowing that I'm going to switch and he goes into Celebi. Uh, what I'm going to do is go into my Crobat. And I wasn't really, I wasn't too scared of him at the moment. I knew that a Psychic was possible, but I do have two switch-ins, three switch-ins to Psychic. And I'm going to go ahead and just Super Fang as I'm pretty sure Skarmory is going to come out here. Uh, and yeah, so we're at a pretty decent position. Seismito being low is just so bad for me at the moment though. So I go into Lopini here as he decides to go back into this Jolteon. And I'm just going to go ahead and straight up fake out because I, I'm not fast in it just yet. And I do Mega Evolve here, and he only takes 18% from that fake out. That is a pretty defensive Charizard. I mean, that's regardless, it's not a ton of damage, I should say, but eh. So you can go ahead and Willow with me here. I should have seen this coming and gone into Sigilyph, but at the same time, I did not feel like taking that uh, possible Flare Blitz. And instead of going for Signal Beam here as I wanted to, I go for Skull, trying to get the burn possibly on this Celebi, and basically just to hit anything. And if he wants to bring Jolty on in, that's fine too. So I go into Kevin here, and he's just gonna keep U turning because it is safe, and I'm really, really, sh I know he's scarfed because he was faster than Crobat. So I'm gonna draw Kevin here and go back into Slow Sis, uh, just in case he decides to do something. He does predict that and go for Thunder Punch, but Slow Sis does not care at all, not one bit. And uh, did I misplay here? No, I go for slack off on this switch as he goes to my loaded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so I'm good. I'm good. So my low tick comes out, and I'm just a burn slow sis. And he's gonna go ahead and make a double switch into Jolteon as my only switch into my low tick. Well, I have multiple, but Sigilyph is my best one. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go into Slapping Toad here as he goes for the Shadow Ball. It's the safest thing on his on his set. I could have gone to Lopini predicting that, but I know he had Shadow Ball. I almost would have done that. So I know he's choiced of some sort because when I calced um, the damage on my uh, Seismitoad, I noticed that he did way too much to just be like scarfed or anything that wasn't, uh, what you call it, specs. So I know he's specs and yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and high jump kick on the switch. I know that either Skarm it's Skarmory or something else and nothing, and Celebi doesn't want to switch in. Return is enough to take him out here. And I am perfectly fine with this. So we're both at 5-5 right now. He's going to go into my Lodic here. And I'm going to go ahead and switch out into my Sigilyph here. Because if I get burned, that doesn't really matter to me. And, I go, and he goes for the Scald. It does a good amount of damage to me. So I know he's got some investment. And I am burned though. Actually, I don't know if he got investment. I don't know. I wanted to. I screamed at myself in my mind. I was like, click Air Slash. Click Air Slash. You're not going to regret it. Click Air Slash. I was like, you know what? No, let's not. Let's not. Let's click Cycling. Let's be safe. Let's play safe. Play safe. You know what? You know what? Safe got me. Safe got me. Um. Uh, I was gonna say something funny, but I forgot. Anyways, he's gonna go back in his jolty on here, and I have no switching. And I'm like, fine. I'll just sacrifice Durant. It's fine. You know, he didn't get to do anything, but you know, it is perfectly fine. So he goes into Rex Havoc. His Tyranna. It. His Nido King. Excuse me. Brave Bird does half, as I don't really want to switch into anything. I survived this T bolt very well, so I know he is a. Uh, He's definitely sure for his life for it, but uh, I don't know about his invest. I don't know what his investment is, because I lived that very comfortably. So I wanted to roost there just in case, uh, but I didn't want him living for free and predicting going for Earth Power. So I decided to go straight away for the Brave Bird on his uh, on his Nido King, and I get two off on Jolteon before he KOs me with the Thunderbolt. I don't know why he didn't just Volt Switch there. To be honest, I would have given him some much better momentum. So I'm down to my last three. I go to Melo. Uh, wow, Melo. I go to Lopini. <laughs> See, I already missed her. Uh, so he's going to go into Milotic here. And this return does a 
lot of damage considering considering this is a Milotic. And I was just like, you know what? No, he's trying to bait me so I can go for high jump kick and then miss because he uses protect. But he predicts that very nicely and goes into his Jolteon. And now I have to sacrifice my Sigilus. So it's looking really bad for me. I'm down 5 2 because his Jolteon is jerk. So he's gonna go to Celebi here. Now I wanna bait him into using Psychic, so I go into my, into my uh, Lopini here. And on a crit, I got 30. Okay, that was a crit. Never mind. Never mind. So uh, I'll, I'll show you guys later. But yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch out into Slow Sis, knowing that he's probably gonna go ahead and go for the Psychic just to do something. He gets a crit on Slow Sis. It matters a little bit just because of the amount of damage I can now not take. I'm gonna go ahead and scald on this, on the hit, oh slack off, excuse me, and I'm gonna scald this turn just so I can get some more damage off onto this, uh, onto this here Charizard X, and uh, excuse me, I get 30% on him, and so I'm gonna scald again instead of slacking off for some reason, uh, but it turns out to be a pretty good choice for me to be honest, and I get the crit for 46%. And I'm like, Lopini can take any attack from you other than a Flare Blitz. So I'm like, you know what, you're not gonna go for Flare Blitz because you won't be able to KO my Slowbro. So he goes for Thunder Punch, and I took that very, very well. This is a tough Claws Charizard X, and I took that like a champion. Bun Bun the champion. And so he goes into Needle King here. I wasn't expecting, I was very confused by this play, as he, he explained it later, and I'll explain it after. Uh, he goes for the Sucker Punch on my Megalopony here, and I'm like, oh, I was like, oh my god, what? what? He's, ch he's chipping away at me, and I'm not really noticing my HP. So, he goes for that Sucker Punch, he does reveal to be Life Orb, so he did have some investment into it. Obviously, if he did like 28% with a Sucker Punch, a non-stab Sucker Punch on a resisted Mon. So I decide to stay in. This was the play I was trying to make. He decides to go for the U-turn. Uh, I was thinking that he would go for a Giga Drain, and I could live it. I, I had a very, I had a decent chance of living uh, Giga Drain, or at least the way I calculated it. He actually turned out to be modest and not... Um, is it timid? Yeah, timid. He turned out to be modest and not timid, so it wouldn't have mattered. But he didn't know, so he decides to U-turn out here, and I go into, and he goes into Jolteon, and I go for the return. If I had Draining Punch, that would have been a great time to use it. But yeah, so he goes back into Celebi here, and this is pretty much the end of the battle because. What I didn't notice but at my at the time was my HP was in range, even if he was timid, and it was a very high chance of him KOing me with Giga Drain, and he could have just uh, cleaned up there because well, my last move on is slow, bro. Now, this was a great battle. He had the matchup definitely. Uh, Celebi was an issue. Uh, it was more of an issue than I thought it would be, and yeah. So he he went with Celebi and Milotic. Lopini gets all four kills in this match, and I'll show you why that is important in just a second. But congratulations to David. Very well fought. Um, Chelsea is still inferior, and we'll move on. Uh, let's go back here. I'm still using this tiny-ass screen, but it's fine. Uh, we're eight minutes. Let me see. That means we're almost 20 minutes for the video. I want it to be like 12. That's that's incredible. I talk too much. So, uh, yeah, let's fix this. Go here. Uh, and... All right, let me see if I can move this. Can I? Yes, I can. All right, so now I'm scrolling by. This is Division A. This was pretty much over. You see Bob. Okay, this is going to be zigzaggy for a little bit because, like, I have no steady hands. And he's got 7-0. and And Sasha in an incredible victory over Uzair. And that was just, it was a really fun match to watch. And uh, what else? What else do I have to say? But yeah, so Bob and Sasha making it to the finals, um, well, the finals, to the playoffs, and uh, Uzair falling just short. Uh, it was, they were deadlocked. They were all 5-0 and at one point, and they, they started fighting each other, and it was just like, cool. All right, so let me just leave this here for just a second. Let me scroll down. Oh, God. Uh, let's see. So, then there's Division, damn it. <laughs> there's Division B, me sitting there in third place now, and then Nacho... <sighs> I just realized, like, one play I didn't make in the week against Nacho, I didn't have, uh, whatchamacallit, I had no source of, uh, what, uh, what was it, what is it, what was it, he didn't have sand up at the time, and I had a max HP Specs Typhlosion in on his non-specially defensive Empoleon, 
and I didn't click Eruption, which would have KO'd it, and that would have put my differential, I would have lost two just now, I would have had a plus two differential, plus two or plus three, as I could KO anything on his team. I would have KO'd his Hit Paladon or his uh, Excadrill next with uh, with an, with the Specs Eruption, and then he would have only had, it would have been Hit Paladon, and he would have tried to sweep with Excadrill. I could have sacked Typhlosion, gone into my, um, gone into Slowbro and just won the game there. But, that didn't happen. And, uh, they did get me another kill for Lopini, though. You'll see what I said for it. But, yeah, so that differential would have put me at what? Let's see, I would have had plus two on this. Put me at 9, 11. Oh, wow. That was, uh, uh, that wasn't meant to. I'm sorry. So it goes to 11. And then I would have lost two there. I would have been at 10. I would have been 5 and 2 with a 10 differential. And they would be 5 and 2 with an 8 differential. So I would have been, uh, I would have been in a much, much better situation. Or 9 to differential, excuse me. I would have been at a 9 differential, he would have been at 8, he would have been 1 shy of uh, taking this. And that one, maybe that sack wouldn't have happened then, he would have just gone for the win. But, and probably, he would have gotten the tiebreaker though, that would have been, I don't know. But yeah, so, I missed the playoffs, but, if you'll direct your attention to the bottom of the screen, sorry about that, I got, you're seeing all my icons and shit. Uh, we got MVP, we should have had it last season, but um, I got critted by Bob, well not critted, I got flinched by Bob's waterfall in the rain when I was ready to sweep uh, with Mega Altria, who would have gotten the MVP last season. So, sweet redemption, 15 kills, 3 deaths, and 12 differential for my Megalopony. Second place was Swan was uh, Sasha Slanslash, who never died. It, he, he didn't bring it to either to the one match he lost, and he didn't bring it to the finals, he, to his final uh, match of the season either. So. We got work done today. We finally won MVP, and uh, yeah, so. It's been another great season. I'll see you all next season for those of you who are only following this channel before the GPC. And uh, yeah, this was a blast. This was definitely more a lot of fun. I'm coming back next season with a vengeance, and I will destroy all of you. So uh, all of you GPC players watching this, if you're in my division next season, I am coming for your throat, all right? I'll see y'all later. Till we meet again, alright, peace out, and uh, bye. This was way longer than it was supposed to be, and uh, it's gonna take longer to render, which sucks, but um, stay uh, stay cool. Stay uh, uh um, my mascots don't have uh, cool moves to do things, but uh, relic song that like button, yeah, bye. <laughs>